I'll try to use this. And if it fails, you'll tell me. Um, OK. So I'm, I'm telling you about uh, pairwise mode locking of uh, coupled parametric oscillators. Um, this is something, uh, this was uh, supposed to be given by uh, Leon Bello, who actually did all the work that I'm going to show you, including much of the ideas. Um, uh, but I wanted to broaden the subject a little bit, so I took over and I apologize. Uh, but uh, so let me start. And the main point is that, um, well, this is an, an ex a terribly simple experiment. And everything I'm going to show you is not published yet. It's just a, a beautiful story that we really enjoy to tell. It's not really yet in optics, even, because it, all, all the experiments that we did is in radio. Uh, but it still makes a lot, a lot of uh, beautiful insight that has to do with uh, the quantum optics side. And if people talk about uh, quantum-inspired um, experiments, I think this is a really nice example. So um, yeah, I, I'm a member of, of two centers by now, uh, of BINA, the Center for Nanotechnology, and of Quest, the new guy. Uh, actually, if you look, this uh, is a little bit bigger than that one because here I know what I'm doing and there much less. Um, because um, if you ask me what do I do in nano, then I say, look, I'm actually overqualified because everything I do is femto. Uh, so, um, but, uh, so, but in Quest, I feel much more at home. Don't tell this to the, peop to the other people in this building, of course. Um, so uh, what we are doing in the lab has mostly to do with what we call, in a sense, the, the lost quantum resource. And that is bandwidth. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll give you just an example that, in a sense, is a precursor to what we will hear very soon afterwards. And that is the ability to do parallel processing in, in quantum uh, information. And you know, this is a, you saw this before. We can make extremely broad band squeezed light. You could think of this as entangled photons, or if it's a little bit of higher power, then this is sque squeezed light. If you zoom in, or if you have this coming out of an OPO, then it's actually a comb, a comb of many, many modes. They're all, they're Q modes. They're entangled. Uh, so you have pairs that are entangled. Uh, and you have so many of them, so 100,000 or a million. Um, and as Olivier will probably tell us very soon, you can make beautiful cluster states out of them. Uh, you can make complete schemes for quantum computing out of them. Um, and it's, it's like, in a sense, it's a, it's a beautiful and promising avenue. Um, and there are two things that we mentioned yesterday in, in Yaakov's talk, uh, that uh, we want to do something about measurement because we can generate all of them at once. But can we measure all of them at once? And this is one thing that we're trying to make progress towards. And what I'm going to tell you about today has to do with generation, and specifically with high power generation. Because when you go low power, below the threshold of an OPO, then they all line up. They all, and they're all there, and the million is there. But once you go above threshold, and the, the question, it's a good question whether you want to or not, but there are good reasons to go above threshold, then they don't all light up. You have mode competition, and many times you just have one or two, and that's it. Um, so this is where we're going. And really, the experiment is so simple that I'm actually embarrassed. Um, it's, we're talking about coupled parametric oscillators. So this is a radio frequency experiment. And here, this is the a photo of the experiment. This is a, and, and you can actually see that they're the same. This is something that doesn't really happen in optics usually. Um, um, and then, so we have here a loop, which is our parametric oscillator. There's an amplifier, there's a mixer in there, which acts as a nonlinear element. We put in a pump, and we couple two of them. And in the experiment, it's actually the same thing. Um, why do we do this? So the main thing is that you can really see the coherent physics of parametric oscillators. And as I would like to convince you today, it is very different from that of many other oscillators that you are familiar with. Um, and if you're only interested in the coherent physics, then an RF experiment works. 
I mean, we, you, we will not see anything quantum here. There will not be real squeezing. Well, you can squeeze something, but this is, would be classical noise. You cannot squeeze quantum noise because quantum noise is not a limit here and it's not observed. But if you're looking at the coherent physics of the parametric oscillator, then you're in business. You don't need necessarily to go to optics. Um, and the, nice, the very nice thing about RF is that you can actually observe things in time. You can put it on the scope and you can see the temporal behavior of your field, which is something that in optics we only dream of. Um, and uh, so you can see beautiful beats that I will very soon show you. Um, and we can do what we call mode locking. It has to do with what I wanted to show you before. That we can actually use this coupled system to generate not just one pair, but many, and they're all oscillating above threshold. So, um, but these are not pulses, so it's not really mode locking. It's a con fine, funny combination, and I'll, I'll explain that so sooner. And the other important thing is that this is, a, I don't know, two hours to set up. Tell me how long it takes to set up a, a, an, an optics experiment. It's definitely much cheaper. So uh, if, this gives, if this, was, this gives some motivation, then that's good. Um, so this is all that I have. I have two parametric oscillators and they're coupled by some kind of some beam splitter. And, uh, um, but actually it's not just a, um, a single oscillator because every one of them has a comb in it. So it's actually a multiplexed network of coupled parametric oscillators. Um, and we have many of them. And funny enough, it, it, they, they are analogous to a spin model that is very uncommon. So it's a spin model where spins do not align ferromagnetic, not either anti-ferromagnetic, but in 90 degrees to one another. Um, and because it's 90 or minus 90, it's highly frustrated. All of those are actually ground states. Um, so, and it's not, uh, so it's not a ferromagnetic ground state, and it's surprising. It's not, it's, it's unique. So after this, let me, so I'm going to quickly talk a little bit about uh, coupled oscillators and coherent phenomena in them, um, and then compare coupled parametric oscillators to coupled lasers, talk a little bit about our mode locking of uh, coupled parametric oscillators, and then show the mapping to a frustrated spin model. Um, so yeah, well, you know, this is the basic of a coherent phenomenon, a beat. So if you have two oscillators uh, that are coupled, then you could see energy being transferred from one to the other and back. Um, and this is really the main characteristics of any coherent phenomenon. Uh, but the point is that beats are almost always transient. They have a lifetime. A coherent lifetime, there's decoherence, there's loss. At some point, uh, the beats die out. Um, and uh, so, and he, what I want to show you is that um, normally, uh, that, or that we have a special system where this does not happen. Um, so let's think for a moment about lasers. Take two laser oscillators and couple them. So there's one laser with a gain medium. There's another one with a gain medium. And then I put a beam splitter inside. And we have here a little interferometer that couples energy from one to the other. This is in the language of, of near um, reactive coupling. So, uh, uh, and then, and this theta, which is the phase of this interferometer, is t what tells us how much energy we're coupling from one oscillator to the other and back in every round trip of this oscillator. And we know how to solve this. If those two oscillators were originally degenerate, degenerate then now there are two modes. There is the symmetric mode and the anti-symmetric mode, and they're split by a detuning that is governed by the strength of the coupling. Um, so, uh, the point is, okay, all of this is nice, but if you want to go to just a the laser, then what happens is that, okay, those are the modes, and the laser operates on one, because mode competition would usually select. They would not have exactly the same gain, and therefore, well, mode competition will put us either on the symmetric or the anti-symmetric, tell me which one has better gain. Um, so we will not see any beats of those um, in a laser. Now let's move on to a, to a parametric amplifier. Oops. Well, those, forget about those uh, rectangles, I'm sorry. But so a parametric amplifier also amplifies, it has a pump, 
and it will transfer energy from that pump to a signal, an idler. But first of all, they come in pairs. So a signal must come with an idler. Um, and so this is one thing. Um, and uh, so it's always a pair. It's never a single mode. Um, so, um, and one more thing that we need to remember is that a parametric amplifier, this will come back later, cannot store energy. Meaning, if we have a single frequency pump coming in, then this energy that is there will never wait. If you're not there with your signal and idler to milk out the energy, then it's gone. Um, so it has really no lifetime or, or no uh, memory inside. So now, if we take two, suppose that we take two parametric oscillators that were originally oscillating on a degenerate mode, and we couple them, then this would lift the degeneracy. We will have those two modes, but a single oscillator cannot oscillate on only one. So it must oscillate on both, and they act as a signal and an idler. Um, so this is nice. So by, and by tuning the strength of the coupling, you can tune the two modes splitting at your will. So this sounds like a, a nice thing. So we, we wanted to check it. This is the experiment. I already told you about it. Um, and uh, so uh, and indeed, if we look at the output of just a single oscillator, we see a beat. Uh, those two beats are out of phase, so energy is flowing from one oscillator to the other and back. Um, if you look at this in frequency, you see that you have a pair of frequencies and you change the coupling and it goes higher and higher. And what's nice about it is that you can change the two mode separation without changing the oscillators at all. You're not changing rep rates, you're not changing any property of the oscillator itself, you're just changing uh, the coupling between them um, and then you can see this two mode separation changing. And this would work for below threshold as well as above. Um, another thing that you should notice, and this is something that is nicely seen when you look at this at time, and that is that they are both, they have out of phase envelope, but in phase oscillation. So the carriers are exactly the same. They are either in phase or exactly out of phase because that is dictated by the phase of the pump. The pump, this is the core of the squeezing oper operation of uh, the parametric oscillator. So, and now we want to, so as I told you, we now, for now we just coupled a pair of parametric oscillators and this was nice, but maybe, uh, but you know people, this was mentioned in the morning, people are very interested in networks of multiplexed uh, parametric oscillators. Uh, this was from mentioned by Yamamoto. So coupling many parametric oscillators, this is again the experiment, the first experiment that uh, uh, was done in the group of Yamamoto about coupling parametric amplifiers as solvers, as, as a machine for solving hard problems. Um, now, okay, and this is another um, experiment of the same thing. As I mentioned, we were not going after this direction and probably will not go after this direction. But we want to show you that this system of two coupled parametric oscillators is actually many, many. And we can make this a large number of coupled parametric oscillator in a very non-trivial way. Um, so we, I'm, it's like a switch of gears. We, we, we move back to lasers and now we're talking about how do we make lasers oscillate on many modes? And we do that by a process of mode locking. So we, and by mode locking, we have some kind of a saturable absorber or, or some kind of a shutter inside uh, the, the, that uh, forces the, la the laser to oscillate in pulses. Pulses are inherently many modes. So this is a laser that oscillates on uh, many, uh, uh, this is the way that we create ultra-fast pulses. Um, and if we think about this in frequency, what this shutter does is it couples uh, nearby neighbors or actually even more. So we're generating coupling between frequencies uh, and by this uh, we, are, uh, we, have a, we are mode locking the laser. Um, and then we couple energy in phase from one mode to, one, to the other and this is what pushes the laser towards pulses. They're all in phase. Um, and then so, and a, we, I mean, but this does not work in an OPO. 
because an OPO does not, at least if it's an OPO that is pumped by a single frequency uh, la uh, laser, because it would not want to go to pulses, because it doesn't have any memory. If you want to have a pulse running in the cavity, then this means that you need to have some memory of the energy. What you pumped a moment ago should stay until the pulse comes in and sweeps out the energy. And this, in an OPO, does not work. So a parametric oscillator that doesn't have any storage mechanism for energy will not be able to do this. Um, so what will it be able to do? So we want some kind of a knob that couples modes, but it couples them in a way uh, that does not affect the loss. So we don't want to modulate the loss, and we actually don't even want to modulate the phase. Uh, and it does not induce pulses because the OPO does not like pulses. So we have such a knob. I just showed it to you. And this is this coupling. Let's now modulate the coupling in time and modulate it at a rate which is the rate of the repetition of each of those lasers. So this would be here we are coupling energy from one oscillator to the other. And if we are modulating the coupling in time, we are coupling it from one mode to the near neighbor in the other oscillator and back and, and back from, and, and going back and forth. So, and this is unlike loss modulation, it doesn't favor any instance in time. So there, there is no, and, um, and as I will show you in a moment, it couples energy in quadrature. So it couples modes between modes or it locks the modes in quadrature to one another, not in phase. So, um, wait, I actually wanted to show the results. Where are they? Oops. Ah. So, and, and this, is, so this is what happens. So this is the result uh, that, that we have. We're modulating uh, at the repetition rate. And as you can see, this is the pump. This is DC. We are lighting the entire range between the pump and DC. So if this is not one octave, this is not two octaves, this is, I don't know, like 10 octaves that we have here. Um, and in radio frequency, that's not a big deal. So this was, it, normally all those modes would compete. Um, and uh, we're now, so first of all, in terms of mode locking, it does exactly what we wanted. Um, and as you can see, it's a symmetric uh, uh, it's a symmetric um, spectrum because uh, we um, have, uh, well, this is a, if this is a signal, this is its idler and back and forth. Um, if you look at this in time, this result in time is beautiful and it's really not false. Um, so let me go back to here. If you think about this now, as I mentioned, it means that if, if this Every pair of modes here can be looked at as a spin. Um, and those spins, as I mentioned, are coupled, and they're coupled in quadrature. So this spin is either at 90 degrees or at minus 90 degrees to that one. And this one the same with respect to that one. So this is actually the ground state. So in a sense, even though we are oscillating in a coherent manner, this is a very not well-defined. This is not a ferromagnet. They don't all align. They're actually, we have a, a, and every time that we do this, we'll get a completely different um, oscillation. So, um, yes. Um, so I mentioned that already. We have a frustrated ground, ground state. Uh, and now it becomes fun because we didn't plan to look on this as a model of, of XY spins. Uh, we wanted to make a broadband oscillation. But it seems that now we can look at all kinds of interesting things that may be relevant. So we can make um, an array of coupled spins, near neighbor or more than near neighbor. Um, uh, the, the one thing that we cannot do is inhomogeneous coupling. So our coupling is homogeneous. We couple in the same way all near neighbors. But apart from that, we can do many, many uh, beautiful uh, games um, and an optical experiment is something that we really plan on doing because that would be beautiful because then we will not have 20 modes, but uh, 200,000. 
Um, so this brings me to the conclusions. Um, the point is, uh, the main point that I wanted to make is probably that parametric oscillators show unique coherent dynamics that cannot be observed by, well, I don't know if linear oscillators, but laser oscillators or with linear amplifiers. And that an RF experiment is, well, it is simple and it's elegant and it's illuminating because you can see things that you cannot see in optics. It's not just a game, which is the way we started with it. It has value in it of its own. Um, uh, we can exploit the many natural modes of our cavity to create a frequency multiplex network of coupled parametric oscillators. Um, and those have a very interesting steady state, not usually seen um, in optics. And uh, with this, I'll say thank you. <laughs>